Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart, deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, I have a little special offer for you guys. I have bought too many copies of my book, Nine Rules for the Future, and I have 10 to give away. That's right, folks, 10 copies to give away. So the first 10 people, five plus five, to email me their address at thinkfuture at gmail.com, thinkfuture at gmail.com, will get a copy of Nile Rules for the Future mailed to them. That's right, folks, paper copy. You have to be in the United States. Sorry about that, folks, but if you are in some other country, plead your case. Tell me why you need a copy of my book. So today, I want to talk a little bit about Socrates. Now, I'm a philosopher. I have a philosophy degree in addition to everything else that I have done and I, uh, everything else that I've learned. And I'm listening to, I'm currently listening to a great audio version of Plato's Republic. And the reason, one of the reasons why it's great is that it really tries to, really encapsulates the whole Socratic concept of learning and exploring and discussing and philosophizing. It's great. And one of the things that Socrates was known for, and if you've ever read anything where he's a character, uh, say in, in a book or whatever, or you've, if you read um, Plato, Plato's Republic or anything where they, they talk about Socrates and the way he acted, is that he always came at things with a particular attitude. And the particular attitude was, all I know is that I know nothing. And if you think about it, it's a little bit like Zen mind, beginner mind. They, and even though he does know things, obviously he knows things. I mean, he's an educated, he was an educated man. Obviously, he knows things, but he came at things from a position of ignorance, really. That he knew nothing about the conversation. He knew nothing about what we were talking about. He came into situations, and he continued to ask questions. It was all about questioning. Questioning as if he knew nothing about what was going on, about what, what was being discussed. And if you think about it, that's really the best way to facilitate almost any kind of conversation and any kind of learning is to use this Socratic method, this method of coming into a conversation or a situation or whatever, professing that you know nothing. Even if you do know something, that you know nothing. You come at it with a completely open mind and you ask questions as if you don't know anything about the situation. And if you do this sort of thing, if you use this, I mean, if you listen to some of the some of the dialogues and some, some of the dialogues, listen to Plato's Republic, listen to some of the ways in which, and there's plenty of stuff out there on the Socratic method and how to ask questions in the way Socrates did. And I think this is the thing. It's like I've said before that we all need a little more philosophy in our lives. I think most organizations need a chief philosophy officer, somebody who can look at the ethics and the morals and all these things wrapped around corporate actions. Because a lot of times we don't think about it that way. We think about it in piecemeal ways, a little bit of sustainability, a little bit of social, a little bit of governance, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of profit, etc. We don't think of it holistically. We don't think of it as a philosophy. What is your corporate philosophy? Who is your corporate philosophy officer who is charged with keeping you on the straight and arrow in a philosophical way. So what I want to propose is that you do some research on Socrates when it comes to innovation, when it comes to facilitation, when it comes to expanding and inventing and innovating and creating new ideas. Attempt to use the Socratian method to have a Socratian mind and ask questions. I mean, so many people are afraid to ask. It's one of those things that when you first start a role at a company, people think, oh, you can get away with asking stupid questions because, well, first of all, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but let's backtrack on that. 
you can get away with asking questions which some people may think is are stupid because you can always say well you're new I've only been here a month I've only been here two months I've only been here two weeks I don't really know how things work around here so that's why I'm asking this question and if you are in an organization where continuing to ask these kind of questions continuing to perform the Socratic what I know is that I know nothing in these organizations and you're having a problem with that you may want to think about going somewhere else because these kind of questions these kind of almost naive questions are the things that will really uncover the reasons under things it's kind of like Toyota's five whys I mean it might sound childish right when somebody says to you I have a problem you underline the first why and then when you get to the reason why the problem is occurs, then you go to the second why, and the third why, and the fourth why, and you're thinking to yourself, if you're on the outside of this and you don't understand the philosophy, you might think to yourself, this is just like a, some child, some six-year-old co- ch- kid going, well, why? Well, the grass is green. Why? Because it has chlorophyll. Well, why does it have chlorophyll? Right? Seems childish. Seems like a, like a beginner's mind. Seems like it's an expert. No, someone who's not an expert, like an amateur. But that's where you uncover the good stuff. If you come at things from that, see, why do you think things like beginner's mind, why do you think things like beginner's luck work? Beginner's luck works because people don't know the rules. And that's exactly what Socrates does. He comes into a situation forgetting about the rules. Even if he knows about the rules, he forgets about the rules, and he uses that to dig deeply into the reasoning behind things. Why does this happen? Why are we doing this this way? Is there a reason why this is going like this? Is there a reason why people feel like that? Is there a reason why your customers are doing this instead of that? Why are you getting this kind of result instead of that kind of result? So the next time you really want to dig into finding a solution to a problem, think about Socrates. Put the Socrates hat on. Become the man who knows that he knows nothing. Try that tactic and see how it goes for you. I'd be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if you got more innovation out of it than you ever thought. That's it for me for today. See you next time and until then, don't forget to think future. (music) 